Hey there. Guess what we're doing today. So, uh, a while ago I did something called Camp NaNoWriMo, which is a camp session of the National Novel Writing Month, and I talked about it a bit on this channel. And it went well, until it kind of didn't. But I have the first draft of scenes from the story that I wrote. And I kind of want to read them, so that's kind of what I'm going to do. And I'm really excited about it. Uh, before we talk about it, though, when I initially wrote the scenes, these people sounded like high schoolers. I promise you that. Now that I... well, then I rewrote it and took out every contraction and every... and made everything as long as possible just to hit the word count, which I wound up missing because my computer froze with like 15 minutes left in the event and I couldn't update my final word count. So I won, but nobody knows and nobody cares. Anyway, so I'm going to read some of the stuff that I wrote. I don't know if I'm going to read it all or not, but we'll see. I'm going to lean super close to the camera because it's in like 8 point font. So, scene number one. Akila tells the cheerleaders that she's not going to be one this year. Um, so I went to the doctor over the summer, you know, for one of those physicals we have to get before the school year starts, to get my forms signed for cheer and stuff. Okay, A, we all do that. Lisa pushed the zucchini on her plate around with a fork. What is your point? Well, I... Ugh. Akilah looked down at her tray. I cannot do cheerleading anymore. See, see, I told you. It used to be like, I can't do cheerleading anymore. But I'm not gonna try and fix that in my head or fix that now. I want a first draft first. But anyway. Everyone stopped talking. Britt and Jane both actually spat water back into their cups, and Rebecca dropped her fork. Um, what? Sarah asked. You're quitting the team? I have to. She took a deep breath. You know how I kept getting seriously hurt, to the point of having surgeries? And how I was always way more sore than you all? It is the same reason I was able to do all the extreme tricks you guys are unable to do. They are not just party tricks. I have a disease. A disease? Ashley, who was sitting to the right of Akila, instantly scooted away from her. Are you contagious? Rebecca asked her. No, it's a genetic disease. Basically, my body cannot hold itself together. It's called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Britt stood up and everyone fell quiet. She walked to the... She walked over to Akila. Oh, I skipped a sentence. Pfft. <laughs> this is funny. Lisa started laughing. Anal dandruff syndrome? This is too rich. Everyone else at the table started laughing, too. Then here we go. Britt stood up and everyone fell quiet. She walked over to Akila and pushed her heart on the shoulder. There are easier ways to let down your friends than making up a disease. And there are ways to do it that result in much less betrayal. She dug her fingernails into the shoulder of Akila, see that would just be Akila's shoulder, and pushed her to the floor. Do not bother coming to our table again, she said, then returned to her seat. Akila groaned. She had dislocated her elbow from the fall. She gritted her teeth and got to her knees. She pulled herself up with her good arm and stood at the edge of the table. She held out her injured arm. Relishing the looks of disgust those who were once her friends were showing. As all eyes were on her, she silently pushed it back into joint, smiling as the cheerleaders screamed in horror, picked up her backpack with her arm that was newly mended, and left the cafeteria. Scene two! Akila and Paula meet at the interest meeting for the fall play. Paula looked up from her flyer as she heard the door open. She held the flyer up to cover her mouth and smiled as she saw the pretty girl she had run into earlier. Who was she? Why was she here? So, the first way I wrote this actually was a song that was on my old laptop that died before I could, like, transfer the song. It was on Word, not in Google Docs. And in the song, I already knew that they, like, ran into each other in the hallway, but I didn't write that scene. So, they bumped into each other earlier today, or some point. Uh, who was she? Why was she here? Akila looked around the room nervously. There were a lot of people here, and they seemed to be in vague groups with the few empty seats in between them. She saw a stack of interest flyers and picked one up, then saw the girl she had run into earlier. 
Sure, she might not have made the best impression, but they had managed to part on good terms, and that girl was the closest to someone Aquila knew in the entire room. The cheerleaders never hung out with the drama kids. The smile on the face of Paula grew as the girl finally started walking and headed for the seat next to her. She sat up straight and put her flyer down on her desk, doing her best to assume her usually suave nature. Could you not get enough of me earlier? She asked, once the girl was close enough to not have to shout, so that would have been like, couldn't get enough of me earlier. But whatever. Akila smiled at her. I am still sorry about that, she said, setting her backpack on the floor and sitting down. I just figured that it counted as getting to know someone. You know, if anyone asks, I can say that I ran into you earlier. It is very true. I'm Paula, Paula said. I've been doing crew for three years, but we are supposed to be getting a new director, so I'm going to try and get a role this year. Why does having a new director have anything to do with acting or doing crew? The girl asked. Was the old director bad? Paula shrugged. Just bigoted. I'm transgender, and she kept insisting that I could only play male roles since I didn't actually know what it was like to be a female. That's awful of her. The girl seemed genuinely upset over it, which surprised Paula. Was she trans too? I'm cis, and you're just as much of a female as I am. Damn right I am, Paula said with a laugh. So it really depends on whether or not our new director is willing to let me play a female. I hope they do. I'm probably going to do crew. I get stage fright. Well, if you're doing crew, then it might not be so bad if I'm unable to get a role. Paula said, then clapped her hand over her mouth. I'm sorry, she mumbled. Um, the girl was smiling. There's no need to worry about it. I hope you wind up doing whatever makes you happiest, but I would love to do crew with you, too. I don't think I ever got your name earlier. I'm Akila. Akila Akaloye. So I don't actually know how to pronounce that name, but racial diversity is important, and it's important to introduce people to new names. So I'm like, listen, Akila is going to be black, a first-generation immigrant. And Paula is Latina of an unspecified country so far, which is not great. But listen, this is early character development. Um. Ah, uh, so Aquila Akaloye. Ah, uh, could you repeat that? It's okay. Most of my friends just call me A. They're not good friends if they fail to even learn your proper name. They're not good friends for a lot of reasons, Akila said quietly. Anyway, it's a, a like applause, so ah like applause, ki like a key, and la like the knit. Akila, Akila, Paula repeated. That's an amazing name. Thanks. You're the first person from here who's bothered to learn how to actually pronounce it. What kind of friends don't learn the name of their friend over three years? Cheerleaders, apparently. Who also don't like you when you can't cheer anymore. Why are you unable to cheer anymore? Paula asked. She was genuinely interested in Akila's life. Uh, the too long didn't read version is that I'm not physically capable of it anymore. And I never really was. The door opened again and a young woman walked in. If everyone could settle down, she said in a loud voice, we'll begin very shortly. Everyone fell quiet. Paula pulled a pen out of her pocket and grabbed the flyer that Akila had picked up. She scribbled on it, then returned it. Akila looked down and smiled at the note. I'd love to hear the long version sometime. Beneath that was a phone number. Okay, so I'm only going to read one more scene, and then I'm going to be done for now. Let me know if you want to hear more of this trashy thing that I wrote, which I love. But, yeah. We're gonna meet another character. We're gonna meet Rusty, who is definitely named after Rusty Clanton, because I like Rusty Clanton a lot. And I struggle to come up with names, so I always use people who I know of for names. Like, Akila is named after a smoothie freak here on YouTube. Akila, obviously. Paula is the name of my cousin. Okay. Scene 3. Akila breaks up with Rusty, who doesn't mind it at all. Also, I kind of am adding back in the contractions. Rusty! Akila ran across the expanse in between the main school building and the football field. Hold up! 
Rusty, who was about five feet away from the football field, stopped walking and turned around. Hey, Eula, he said, smiling. She finally caught up with him and they hugged. What's up? Akila stepped away from him. We, uh, we need to talk at some point. Rusty furrowed his eyebrows. We're talking now. He paused. Is this a dating conversation or an our actual relationship conversation? Both. Ah. Rusty scratched his chin. Ah. You can still talk here if you want. That's okay, Rusty said, maybe too quickly. I can go somewhere else. He turned around to the group of people gathered on the field. I'll be back in 15 minutes or less, he shouted. If coach comes before, then cover for me. A multitude of okays and got it echoed back at him. He yelled at his arm. Let's go to my car. Akila took it, and they walked to the parking lot in an uneasy silence. Finally, they arrived, and Rusty unlocked his car. The two of them got in. So, Rusty said as he turned on the engine to roll down the windows. What do you want to talk about? Well, Akila responded. Um. Rusty sighed as he turned off his car. Does this have anything to do with you not being a cheerleader? Kind of? Like, we talked about that. Yeah, and I'm still really sorry that this whole medical disaster is happening to you. No worries, but thank you all the same. She smiled at him. He was always so kind. But since then, I've kind of been hanging out with the theater kids a bunch. That explains why we suddenly are always listening to musicals whenever you're the one driving. Yeah. This girl, Paula, recommended them. Paula? Rusty asked. As in the feminine form of Paul? That's an unusual name. I guess. Akila bit her lip and looked out of the window. An unusual name for an unusual girl. What's so unusual about her? Well, um, she likes me. So she's a lesbian? Awesome! Rusty was smiling. Do you like her? Akila was smiling now. He could see it in the mirror. Yeah, she said quietly. I do. That's great. You two should so totally... Oh, he suddenly stopped talking. Do you want to date her? That's what I wanted to talk to you about her. I do want to date her. Do it. I'm not going to stop you. As your best friend, in fact, I encourage it. Yeah, I knew you would say that. But we're still supposed to be in a relationship. It's fine. It was for our mutual benefit. We were both trying to stay in the closet. If you don't want to anymore, then the relationship is of no use. He shrugged. It's simple. But what about you? Akila asked. Who will help protect your cover? There's no need to worry about it. I'll just be really heartbroken until I don't feel like I have enough time to commit. He leaned back in his seat. wonder how long I can pretend to grieve our pretend relationship with it being socially acceptable. Rusty, seriously, what are we going to cook up? The truth, oddly enough, sounds good. After all, you are going to be dating Paula, this Paula chick, assuming she says yes. So I'll just tell the truth that you were a lesbian all along and dated me to please your parents or something. A lie embedded in truth is much more believable than a lie in a nest of lies. But they'll try to get you a rebound, girl, I'm sure. Rusty sat up and grabbed Akila's hand. Listen, La. I'll be fine. You take care of yourself. Okay, she said, accepting defeat. You'd better cry a single manly tear or we'll never believe her story. And that's fair, he said. But before I go, I have a favor to ask of you. What is it? Teach me how to say your name. After all you've done for me, it's the least I can do. I've been a bad boyfriend, which is kind of understandable, and a bad best friend, which is unforgivable. I forgive you, she said, and then spent the next three minutes amazed at how hard it was for Rusty to get her name correct. Okay. So, a bit of backstory, I guess. Wow, this is like 13 minutes of me reading stuff I wrote. Oh, God. Um... Rusty's ace, and also Aero, so he's aromantic and asexual, and he's just not about that life, and Akila is a lesbian. It's important to me that they're both lesbians, because as important as it is for, um, 
bi, pan, and poly people to have representation, I think we need, like, lesbian stories, too. Especially about trans lesbians. Um, yeah. So they, so Aquila and Rusty dated for mutual benefit, a sort of cover story. And then, yeah. So that's some of what I spent July doing. Hope you liked it. If you want more, I can read more of it. There is more, but it's a first draft. Anyway, I hope you have a great day.